She's a trusted advisor to top CMOs. From Forrester, here's Shar Van Boskirk. Good morning, everyone. At an event like this, where there's so much networking going on, I think this is um, a very apt cartoon. Now, I didn't see anybody out there with the cone of shame on, but maybe some of you were thinking the, the caption here, which is, it keeps me from looking at my phone every two seconds. I want to talk to you a little bit about how technology has changed you. And I want to suggest that we have entered a post-digital world. And I don't mean that to sound apocalyptic. I just mean it to signify that we are no longer in a place where digital can function as a bolt-on to the rest of your marketing strategy. So I want to talk you through the, the trends that I think are provoking this post-digital world. And then I'm going to give you some new rules, some habits for you to adopt as a post-digital CMO. So if you think a little bit about your own behavior, I would say that thought number one, the signal that we have entered a post-digital world, is that your customers are entitled today, not just empowered. So you've thought probably a little bit about your own interest in accessing information and getting to the bottom of the deals that you want. But I would challenge that today, customers also believe they deserve something. In fact, partly because of mobile technologies, we find that customers expect that they can get what they want in context and at their moment of need. We call this the mobile mind shift, and this is part of that trend number one, that customers are entitled today, not just empowered. Part number two here is that the digital distinction has dissolved. This means that you and your customers no longer notice the difference between a digital experience and a physical experience. Today, 22% of us stream television programming to watch whenever we want through a mobile device, through a tablet. And this bottom picture is a picture of a Korean customer ordering groceries through his mobile phone via a digital display on the side of a subway car. Is this a digital experience or a physical one? And does it does it even matter? Then my third signal that we are moving into a post-digital world is that digital insights are fueling business strategy. And this changes the nature of how strategy and planning works. This is an example from TXU, a utility company out of Dallas where they have installed smart meters inside every customer's home or outside their home. And the data from these smart meters helps to not only manage energy consumption, but it also helps TXU create pricing strategies that are in line with user consumption. So the notion that these trends are provoking a different era, a post-digital era, is something interesting, but what does this have to do with marketing? Well, I would argue that marketing habits haven't kept pace, and let me just walk you through my argument here. Most marketing practices today are based on disciplines that were developed in the mass marketing era. It made sense to have reach and frequency-based strategies when users were only exposed to media, maybe in the morning, during their morning commute, or maybe at home when they had an hour to watch TV at night. But the notion of reach and frequency doesn't make sense anymore when we are always on. 
In fact, 85% of all marketing is still spent on advertising, even though we know that strategies to engage customers through demonstrations of a brand promise are more effective. Now, likewise, strategies then developed in the digital marketing era are not enough either. These strategies tend to be very channel-centric. We've all fallen in love with the click-through because it finally gave us a chance to measure a direct response to our media. But of course, a user doesn't expose just one channel at a time. And this notion of loving the click-through doesn't account for an entire customer journey. The reality is that humans are quite irrational creatures. And we make decisions for a lot of reasons that cannot be predicted simply based on data science, simply based on trying to create a programmatic path through digital channels toward purchase. So in a post-digital world where your fundamental marketing disciplines based on mass marketing or even digital marketing are not enough, what is your challenge? What is your to-do? And I would encourage you to become a post-digital marketer. And I'm going to give you three rules, three habits to embrace as a post-digital CMO or a post-digital marketer. These rules are to be human, to be helpful, and to be handy. These are, in a sense, the characteristics of a good sales agent or a good customer service rep, but now it's your job to build these rules at scale across your brand. Let me address each of these in just a little bit of detail. The first is to be human. This means to treat your customers as people, to interact with them as an individual would with another individual. This means to be authentic, to be empathetic, to be transparent. Just a quick example here comes from Caterpillar. This is the CAT 360 Advantage program. This program leverages mobile analytics that are built into the equipment that people buy through CAT's resellers. These analytics keep track of the health of the machinery and feed that information back to the reseller. Then the reseller can proactively be in touch with the user of the equipment to make sure that they're getting the most out of their program. This is a way for Caterpillar to foster a brand and honor its channel relationships, all by enabling a more human connection. My second rule is to be helpful. And this quite simply means to solve a user need. Now this is very different for a lot of marketers that have been very focused over the years on promoting product. You get handed an assignment and told to promote. This is about solving for a customer need. This means maybe getting involved in the ideation process around what should that product even be? And are we solving for a customer need? rather than just making something pretty or communicating about it. And my example here comes from the UK-based paint manufacturer Deluxe that created a utility focused on inspiring design ideas and also on selling paint. Let me roll this video.
rule is to be handy. And I'm using the word handy here for its definition of agility, flexible, able to accommodate dynamic conditions. This means that marketing is responsible for demonstrating the brand promise in all sorts of market conditions. In this example, Red Roof Inn actually relies on marketing to work with facilities to create hotel rooms that demonstrate the efficiency promise of the brand. So if I summarize my lessons for you today, we've got this quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson that I think sums it all up. He says, what you do speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. And my challenge for you as marketers is to stop thinking about saying that you will be a certain way and beginning to demonstrate your brand promise everywhere. Thank you very much.